Hey, Kevin, what's the safety program? You know what? It's a really good question. Honestly, it is a good question. In fact, it might seem obvious to a lot of people. Other people, maybe not, maybe not so much. Especially in today's digital age where we live in an information world and information is at our fingertips, a lot of people may have this impression that the safety program is just something on their phone or something on their computer, where actually it's a whole lot more. Now, some other questions might be is, do we really need one? Is it like a safety management system? Is it the same thing? And can I do it myself? Really good questions. Hi, my name is Kevin Barrett. I make health and safety related videos here on YouTube. And this is the very first video in a new series that I'm working on about health and safety programs. What I'm going to endeavor to do is explain the dynamics, the intricacies, and the composition of health and safety programs, and hopefully shed some light on this foundational element of health and safety. To understand what a program is, what we need to do is look at some definitions. And you know, if you go to your uh, authority having jurisdiction or your OHS authority in your local area and have a look, and then go and surf some different definitions in different locales, you're going to find that they all have some similarities and some very slight differences. So let's have a quick look at a few. Here's one pulled off a website, and it says, a health and safety program is a coordinated system of procedures and processes used to improve occupational health and safety and prevent injury and illness in the workplace. That seems pretty straightforward to me. Now, as I said, uh, there's differences worldwide, and it's important to understand, as I said, some of them will be very, very granular, and some of them will be very broad. Let's have a look at one from the Philippines. The program addresses the incidence of occupational diseases and work-related diseases and injuries among workers through health promotion and protection in all workplaces. It initially focuses on public health workers and informal sector workers, including but not limited to those in agriculture, transport, and small-scale mining. It aims to improve workers' access to basic occupational health services at the local level. That very granular, very defined, but still a good definition. And here's one from the Canadian Centre of Occupational Health and Safety, and it's very good. It helps to drive things home right to the point. A health and safety program is a definite plan of action designed to prevent accidents and occupational diseases. So basically, if you're to consider it and put it in its simplest form, a health and safety program is a plan of attack that you as an organization use to coordinate the activities in your workplace that make it a healthy and safe place to work. Pretty simple. The next question, of course, is do we really need to go to all of this work why do we need one? Do we need one? What's the point? You know what? There's actually three very good points that address different levels or different concerns. Let's look at them now. Many jurisdictions require organizations uh, to have a health and safety program. And of course, the requirements are totally dependent on complexity, size, overall risk, etc. For instance, some locales have it based on the number of people that are employed. Others have it based on both number of people and risk of the activities, etc. Important to check back with your authority having jurisdiction, but in most cases, most organizations have to have a health and safety program of, in some way, shape, or form. Another reason to have a health and safety program is quite simply, health and safety programs help save money. If you think about it, if you have a health and safety program that's designed to prevent injuries, illnesses, reduce risk, then in which case, then you're going to reduce the cost of doing business. In fact, Peter Drucker, a very famous business icon, said this, the first order of business is not to maximize profit, but to minimize loss. And let's focus on the most important thing, the human loss. Another reason, and it's an intrinsic consideration. Now, the internet is rife with the statistics. I'm not going to bother citing them or quoting them. I'll leave it to you to look up and, and prove me wrong if you want. But workers that feel safe and secure are often more productive. In fact, workers that feel safe and secure with the knowledge that their employer actually cares enough to be concerned with their well-being are generally more productive and more apt to work harder at work. So you know what? You want to get your employees to work harder? Simple. Care about them. Novel thought, isn't it? Of course, the question is, well, we have a safety management system, or is a health and safety program different from a health and safety management system? Yes and no. 
it totally depends on what you see your program doing. There's some always some legis legislated minimum requirements for a program, but a lot of times employers will go above and beyond or organizations will go above and beyond because they feel that there's a need to further define uh, their program or add more to it to encompass and make health and safety a holistic thing. Let's have a quick look at a definition from WorkSafe BC. An occupational health and safety management system encompasses more than just your health and safety program. It includes health and safety policies, systems, standards, and records, and involves incorporating health and safety activities and program into your business processes. Having an effective management system improves your ability to continuously identify hazards and control risks in your workplace very defined and, and very granular. I just don't agree with the last sentence because really and truthfully, all health and safety programs should be built upon the identification of hazards, the assessment of those hazards for risk and consequence, and then the implementation of controls to either reduce or completely eliminate the hazards. How do you know if you have a health and safety management system? Well, let's look at it this way. Kind of like Jeff Foxworthy uh, with his, you know, your redneck when. Well, you know you have your a safety management system when. Are you including things like uh, records management, records retention standards, program and document standards, training standards, like, for instance, how you would retain a training organization for health and safety? Are your health and safety processes directing a holistic approach uh, to occupational health and safety by incorporating occupational health and safety activities into other corporate functions? A good example would be, are you using health and safety standards and processes on how you choose and retain contractors or other external providers? Are you choosing them based on their safety performance? Have you incorporated system auditing processes and program improvement standards? Are you incorporating other things outside of uh, generalized health and safety, such as wellness and health promotion into the program? Are you considering data management or have you considered already data management, privacy standards, records retention, records destruction? Are you incorporating other systems for managing the health and safety processes within the health and safety program? If you're doing any or all of these, there's a good chance you're actually running a health and safety management system. Don't panic. Ooh, that one sounds complicated. Don't panic. Yes, it sounds complicated, but it's a good thing. My personal opinion is, uh, you know what? Health and safety management systems are likely a better way to go. Depending on the size and complexity of your organization, you might be better off with a health and safety management system. My personal opinion, as I said, is a better way to go. And the reason is, is because they avoid confusion and obsolescence. They help to maintain continuity as organizations evolve and as they become more fluid and shift back and forth. We also know that in this day and age with things like gig economies, working from home, and uh, more and more of a shift to contract obligations. Positions shift and come and go. And if you have a health and safety management system where you've incorporated a bunch of standards, chances are you're going to be able to ensure continuous improvement and the continuity within that safety management system. Don't panic. Most jurisdictions only require a health and safety program. So don't get all worried, okay? Now, the next question you're going to ask is, hey, can I do this myself or can we do this ourselves? Well, yes and no. Depending on the video you just saw, you have to make a decision on when you're going to approach a do-it-yourself or a DIY project. Now, as far as a health and safety management system goes or a health and safety program, I'm always going to suggest hiring a health and safety professional, not just because I'm one and I want the work, it's because a lot of times a health and safety professional can provide you uh, some good springboard guidance on how to get started and how uh, the waypoints for your journey ahead. Kind of like hiring a hiking guide. But it doesn't mean you can't do it yourself. It's just a good idea to retain uh, some sort of a health and safety professional. However, don't give up just yet. There's some additional thoughts here regarding health and safety programs and, uh, of course, why you might want to look to a health and safety professional. 
Safety program contents, composition, they do have some differences from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and also to depending on your organizational composition. However, in this series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on uh, the use of best practices in order to overcome geographical challenges. As always, I will suggest that you refer back to your local authority having jurisdiction so that you can make sure that you're following and complying with the legislation in your area. However, when you incorporate best practices, most of the time you're going to be complying with the law. So as the old saying goes, amateurs built the ark and professionals built the Titanic. Absolutely right. It is possible to create your own health and safety program. I know many organizations that have done it. In fact, I know many that have done it from scratch, built it up from scratch. Not only that, they've passed compliance or certification audits as a result. So it's not impossible. The intent of this series is to provide an explanation of the intricacies and complexities of a health and safety program, all of its parts, and hopefully with that, you can make up your own mind with a somewhat educated decision on if you want to hire a professional to get you all the way there or part way there or if you want to try it yourself. I'm going to leave all of that up to you, but I'm going to work to provide you all of the information. However, I'm going to rely on your feedback. So please leave your comments below. So once again, we got to the end. Do me a favor. If you like the video, can you give me a like? Well, it's actually down there, but please give me a like. Uh, if you didn't or if you have some thoughts regarding uh, anything within the video, do me a favor. Leave the comments below. For those of you that want to learn more about health and safety, I'm going to leave some links on this side. And please do me a favor, click on them, have a look, and leave me your thoughts with those as well. Please do me a favor, until we see each other again, lead by example. Don't just think about safety, don't just talk about safety, but do safety. Do it whether you're at home, at play, in the workplace. If we're thinking, talking, and doing safety, we're provoking safety. And when we're provoking safety, the world's a safer place. So until we see each other again, take care. Bye for now.